do do theme song. Hello, welcome to Left of the Box News Bites. I'm Sandy. The right to free speech. Here in Canada, we like to think this is a country where we have an absolute right to express what we want without the government coming after us. And while we do have freedom of expression, our right to free speech is not an absolute. Of course you can't yell fire sale in a crowded Best Buy on Black Friday. Also, in Canada, there are hate speech laws. Since most people don't know what the hate speech laws are, I was going to read a long, boring segment from the Government of Canada Justice Laws website, but I like you. The link is below if you need help getting to sleep, so instead, I'll just sum it up from Wikipedia. Inciting or promoting hatred. Publicly inciting hatred makes it an offense to communicate statements in a public place which incite hatred against an identifiable group where it is likely to lead to a breach of the peace. Promoting hatred makes it an offense to willfully promote hatred against any identifiable group by making statements other than in private conversation. Okay, seems straightforward. A lot of what I've seen our politicians do is say hateful, misogynistic, and racist statements, but since they aren't inciting people or trying to promote it, they get a pass? I guess this means Justin Trudeau wearing blackface is an okay form of freedom of expression according to this. It must be because he never suffered any consequences for it. Confiscation of hate propaganda. A judge is allowed to confiscate publications which appear to be hate propaganda. <clears throat> you, you know we get the Epoch Times delivered to our doors once a year or so. Um, it's delivered by Canada Post. In fact, postal workers have gotten in trouble for refusing to deliver this litter box liner of a paper. <laughs> Good to know these laws work. Advocating genocide. It is an offense to advocate or promote genocide, which is defined as killing members of an identifiable group or inflicting conditions of life on a group, which are calculated to bring about the physical destruction of that group. Oh, this one's awkward. Um, oof. <laughs> so, Erin O'Toole brushing off residential schools saying they were meant for education, but it went wrong is okay because he didn't advocate for genocide, he just denied it. And Justin Trudeau selling weapons to the Saudis to use in a genocide in Yemen is okay. And um, there's what's happening with the indigenous peoples currently here in Canada, you know, no clean water, toxic land, them being imprisoned at extremely higher rates than the rest of the population, violence from authorities, <laughs> violence in general. That's okay, according to our government. But advocating to do these actions that are already happening is a crime? Um, Canada, we, uh, we need to talk. Advocating for genocide should be wrong, but so should participating in the genocide. The government needs to be held accountable for what it has done and what it is doing. God, I can't believe what I've gotten myself into with this channel. Ah! <laughs> <sighs> On to what this video is mainly about, Bill C-10, an act to amend the Broadcasting Act and to make related and consequential amendments to other acts. Link to this bill is in the description box below if you would like to add to your bedtime reading list. But for easier consumption, according to Open Media, C-10's primary goal is expanding Canada's Broadcasting Act to apply to all streaming audio or visual content on the internet, including Netflix, Spotify, YouTube, and other popular streaming services. Applying the CRTC's broadcasting television regulations and powers to online streaming in addition to the taxes or production quotas mentioned above, C-10 grants the CRTC the right to set quotas for how much of a streaming platform's content must be CanCon and to require changes to apps, websites, and search results to make CanCon appear more frequently and promoted within these services. 
not following the CRTC's currently unclear rules could cost platforms up to $15 million, which creates a significant incentive for any service not certain they can comply to stop offering their services to people in Canada. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't sound good. One main issue of Bill C-10 is the removal of Section 4.1, which carved out an exemption for social media companies hosting content from individuals to not have to abide by the CRTC regulations. That's the Canada Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission. Since I'm not good at reading and understanding Canadian legal lingo, I'll defer to someone smarter than me. Emily Laidlaw is a Canada Research Chair in Cybersecurity Law and Associate Professor of Law at the University of Calgary. She explains how removing the exemption for users hurts our free speech in a thread she posted on Twitter. While broadcasting regulations used to be about programming related to all our favorite TV shows, news, sports, it would now cover that home video of your kid winning a track meet that you uploaded to YouTube. Here's the free speech problem. Bill C-10 forces social media companies to censor speech. While you might think, hey, it's a cesspool and we should clean that up, remember this is broadcasting regulations. Not all the other regulatory questions about online harms, that bill is coming, platform power or data protection. Why does it force social media companies to be censors? Because of the regulations it requires, the only option to comply with Bill C-10 is for social media to heavily regulate content. How I'm reading this is I, as an individual, will not be censored, but the platform I upload to, in my case YouTube, will have to regulate the content in accordance with the CRTC, so the task of censoring would be the social media platform's responsibility. I'm no expert and I've been cramming information about what all of this means. Luckily, to help all of us, the fees are too damn high, tweeted, C10 is an unparalleled attack on content creators that stretches far beyond harm reduction. 95% of our members want nationalization of telecom, but this is literally the worst way for the government to get involved. Please support Open Media's petition. I have that linked below. I'm not going to read this full image. If you like, you can pause it here and read over the whole thing. I'm just going to read the main titles. The CRTC will be empowered to regulate every meme, podcast, and video uploaded online. We don't fully know what C10 will do because the government lied about its contents. Small and independent creators may be squeezed out of the media, just like the telecom industry. Do you trust Bell, Rogers, or Telus? Why is the CRTC being given so much power when it has already proven to put profits over people? Then there was this enlightening interview between David Common and sponsor of Bill C-10, Heritage Minister Stephen Gilboot in which David asks the most obvious question and Stephen sounds as awkward as a billionaire trying to explain why the minimum wage should not be increased. Bill is about ensuring that these platforms that act like broadcasters pay their fair share when it comes to Canadian culture. So it's about spending obligations, spending requirements. It's not about content moderation. So I, I, I'm going to flip the question for a moment here, Minister, because it was important enough to put that exclusion there in the first place. Now it's gone. Why was it important in the first place to put it there? Con we're we're not interested. I mean, it's not it's not what the bill is. About. I mean, I, I hear you saying it's you're not, not interested, simply... but there literally was an exclusion that was put in the original iteration of that bill. The thing that was reviewed and then it got to committee and bingo, bango, bongo, the exclusion is gone. So why was it important to put it there in the first place such that now the the committee has removed it? Well, I mean, the, the, the committee decides what they want. The bill, first of all, the committee hasn't even finished doing it, doing its work in, in, in terms of, of of the amendments. So, so we don't have a full picture of what the bill will, will look like when it comes back when it comes back to the to the, to the House of Commons for for third reading. W would um, you like to see the exclusion back in there? It's not necessary. I mean, so so if it's not necessary, why was it there in the first place? Well, you know, we've we've worked on this for for, for many months. We 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 came up with what we thought would be the, the the best possible bill. But 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 bill can always be perfected. They will be amended, 
and it, it's not the purpose of the bill. So it's not required to be there because, I mean, this again, this this idea that the CRTC would would start looking, would start doing content moderation is has has no basis in reality. In, in its forty years of existence, it has never done that. It doesn't have the power to do that. Bill C ten doesn't grant the CRTC the power to do that. But, but so I, this whole conversation makes no sense. But a former no CRTC chair, Peter Menzies, has said, I'll, I'll quote here, grant. Granting a government agency authority over legal user-generated content doesn't just infringe on free expression, it constitutes a full-blown assault on it. That is from a former CRTC chair. Stephen reminds me of someone. I can't quite put my finger on it. His voice, his cadence, his movements. No, I don't, I don't think so. Oh my God! The full quote from Peter Menzi, a former commissioner of the CRTC, is from the National Post. Granting a government agency authority over legal user-generated content, particularly when backed up by a government's musings about taking down websites, doesn't just infringe on free expression, it constitutes a full-blown assault upon it, and through it, the foundation of democracy. It's difficult to contemplate the level of moral hubris, incompetence, or both that would lead people to believe such an infringement of rights is justifiable. The article also suggests this change could give Ottawa the power to order takedowns of online content it deems objectionable. Kara, with a last name I'm not going to pretend I have the slightest chance in pronouncing, says that when you open a regulatory door, even if you don't step through it, you've opened that door for any future governments to step through. Yeah, the idea they would make these regulations possible, but then try to tell us it won't be abused by the government is absurd. Fortunately, we have MPs standing up for us. Mr. Speaker, in what country does the government control what people post on the internet, what they can see, and punishes content that does not match, quote, the government's vision, closed quote. China, Russia, and soon to be Canada, because that is precisely what the Liberals' government's Bill C-10 does. Comments about matching the government's vision are not those of a Chinese communist official, but that of Minister of Heritage. Former CRTC Commissioner Peter Menzies has characterized this bill as a full-blown assault on freedom of expression and the foundations of democracy. It is no wonder this Prime Minister has expressed admiration for China's perfect dictatorship. This bill is Orwellian, it's undemocratic, it's un-Canadian, and it must be stopped. That was MP Michael Cooper, a conservative. Stephen, you are making me agree with a conservative. I will never forgive you for this. Yes, the talk about China was stupid, but the conservatives are worried about Bill C-10's ability to censor given how many of them post right-wing content that would be deemed objectionable. And let's not forget the conservatives don't care about our freedoms. They only care when their freedoms are affected. Aaron O'Toole tweeted, Bill C-10 is another attempt by Trudeau's liberals to restrict freedom of speech in Canada. I'll oppose this at every stage of the legislative process. Ronnie Tory, a facts in your face tweeter, replied by saying, here we go again, conservatives who voted for Bill C-51 and C-59 and who allowed dissemination of our telephone records without a warrant are pretending to care about freedom again. Hashtag Bill C-10. Bill C-51 was the Anti-Terrorism Act passed in 2015 under the conservative Stephen Harper government that broadened the authority of Canadian government agencies to easily share information about individuals and it expanded the mandate of the Canadian Security Intelligence Services, CSIS. The Liberals supported it, but promised to amend the bill to increase oversight when they got into power next. Well, they've been in power. How are they doing with that promise? That's, uh... Yeah. Right. The same as they do with all their other promises. They haven't. The so-called amendment was Bill C-59, the National Security Act, passed in 2017 by Justin Trudeau's Liberals. It resolves some problems of Bill C-51, ignores others, and creates new ones. 
such as permitting mass surveillance by CSIS by allowing them to collect publicly available information so long as that information can be found somewhere or purchased somehow, regardless of who collected it and how it was obtained. But we shouldn't have to rely solely on the conservatives. I mean, this bill can't pass without the support of another major party. Of course, the Bloc Québécois is against it as they worry about anything that would infringe on free expression, so long as it has to do with maintaining an individual's French language rights. Not so much when it comes to an individual's right to wear religious symbols or clothing while working for the government in any capacity. And the NDP surely would be against something like this. NDP open to supporting controversial broadcasting bill amendment. Oh, come on. <sighs> the Liberal government's controversial new amendment to its broadcasting bill that would open up user-generated content on social media platforms to government regulation could find support among some opposition parties. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh said Tuesday he was open to supporting the bill with the new amendment, which critics have said amounts to an attack on free expression rights. Hey, NDP, would you wake up? What the hell? Jagmeet Singh, you can't be serious about this. I get you want to support measures to target online bullying, harassment, and hate, but those measures are going to be tackled in a separate bill. Are you trying to lose the next election? No, seriously, are you? We all know the mainstream media never gives you fair coverage. It's people like me and other progressive personalities online amplifying your voice, getting your message out there, and encouraging others to support you. You then turn around and give support to something that has the ability to shut us down? Are you kidding me? I can't believe I have to say this to a political party, but would you stop voting against your own best interests? Oh my God. This is a serious issue that needs to have more public scrutiny. Like our healthcare, our freedom of speech is being chipped away at. In some of my videos, I've said not too nice things about Justin Trudeau. I may have even cussed him out in French, and I've used satire to point out issues. Will that be deemed objectionable and be ordered to be taken down? Who gets to determine what is objectionable? The government, which we as citizens have the right to criticize? The problem with that arrangement should be obvious to anyone. And even if this government doesn't abuse the power they give themselves, what about the next government? And the next? And the next? There are far more concerns with Bill C-10 and what implications it will have. I suggest watching a video by Bothered Boy, linked below. He touches on other issues, and I suggest reading the whole article from Open Media about what is wrong with Bill C-10, and yeah, it's linked below as well. Use the petition they've made and contact your MP and let them know you're troubled by this. While you still can, please express your freedom of speech by leaving comments in the comment section below, hitting the like and subscribe buttons, sharing this video before I'm forced to take it down, and by becoming a Patreon so that I can keep using my freedom of speech and continue making these videos. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. I'm Sandy, wishing your tomorrow is better than your today.